Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books of quarter 4 of 2019, so that's from October to December 2019. I no longer have all of the books because I've been downsizing, etc, etc, so I'm just going to talk you through them. So in at number 10, we have Dawn by Eli Weisel. So this is a novel, it follows um, his day, which uh, day is non-fiction, uh, like memoir of his time in uh, a concentration camp. Dawn follows um, a young soldier who's basically, uh, he's been given an order to put somebody to death in retaliation to somebody on his side being executed. And it's very much like a morality tale. It is fiction, probably shouldn't have been part of the same series. I think they just did that as a marketing ploy. But overall, it was a pretty good read. And I buddy read that with Alex Black, so thank you, Alex. And number nine, we have Fait Divers by Anouk Ricard. This is a French BD, a bandes dessinée. It's um, like a French graphic novel, basically. And what Anouk Ricard did is she took uh, headlines from newspapers and then illustrated them in like parodies and that sort of thing. It was a great way for me to learn a little bit more French culture, I suppose, but also, um, again, I'm trying to learn to speak and write and talk, etc. in French, so that helped too. And I read it with my girlfriend, so that is also another reason why I enjoyed it. And number eight, we have Just Kids by Patti Smith. So I think this was actually, uh, I picked this up after seeing it on Chrissy Books and Berry's channel. Um, quite a long time ago now, it's been on my radar for a while and I finally got to it. And uh, yeah, it's basically Patti Smith's memoir of her youth, the time she spent with Robert Mapplethorpe. The two of them are very much in love. And they were kind of like young poets and artists living in New York in the late 60s, early 70s. I would actually have liked to have got more of an insight into Patti Smith today, but really it was much more about the past and um, her youth. So it was kind of her formative years, so you don't really see how she thinks today, but you see how she became the person she is today. And number seven, we have A Skin Full of Shadows by Frances Hardinge. So I read this as a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. So thank you for that, Anthony. Uh, Frances Hardinge basically writes like historical fiction with a bit of creepiness thrown in. It's a bit middle gradey at times. In this one, um, it was set during the English Civil War between the Cavaliers and the Roundheads. And there's basically a young girl who gets taken in by a family, but she discovers that she's only there because they can turn into ghosts and possess people's bodies so they want her as a vessel you know to continue the lineage so she runs away as you would do and number six we have Snowpiercer volume two the explorers by Legrand and Rochette I actually think objectively the first volume of it was better and it was actually written by a different author these two guys kind of came along after his death to continue the series and there is a volume three which I've got on my way and which I'll be reading soon uh, but I enjoyed this more just because in the kind of intermission between reading the first one and reading this one I've spoken to my other half about it and she's really into the movie and we talked a lot about the symbolism in it Basically, it all takes place on a train um, That's kind of traveling through the post-apocalyptic wilderness and like the closer you get to the front of the state the train the higher class you are considered within that society at number five we have the outsider by stephen king so this was kindly sent to me by charlie heathcote so thank you charlie check out his channel if you haven't already this is like a crime novel with supernatural elements it's the unofficial sort of fourth book in the bill hodges trilogy and it was all right i think king isn't really at his best when he's writing crime and part of the reason for that for me is that I think what makes crime so interesting is that it's grounded in our reality. So as soon as you start having like all these fantastical elements happening, it kind of takes me away from the story a little bit. Still, I mean, even King at his worst is better than most at their best. So yeah, I still enjoyed it and uh, would recommend as I would with all of the books on this. List. And number four, we have Dreamcatcher. This was a buddy read with Stacey's stories. Thank you for that, Stacey. Uh, this is kind of an older King novel, not one of his oldest, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, like an alien novel. It actually reminded me a lot of the Tommy Knockers, and funnily enough, Stacey agreed on that one as well. And we both enjoyed the Tommy Knockers, and not every King fan does. And not every King fan enjoys this one either, but I thought it was probably the superior one of, of the two, of the two alien stories of his that I've read, I guess. And yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Good experience. And number three, we have The Mystery of the Three Quarters by Sophie Hanna. This is basically a new Hercule Poirot novel. Sophie Hanna has been permitted by the Agatha Christie estate to continue the series. She's actually a, like a pretty well-respected uh, crime author in her own right as well, so she's got won awards for her own stuff and whatnot. And I think she did pretty well, although it is obvious that it wasn't Christie writing Poirot because Poirot, for a start, he talked in French a lot more than he normally did, but... Um, yeah, he was kind of almost like a caricature of himself, but the mystery itself was pretty good And the way that I see it is that even if Poirot hadn't been in this story I would have still enjoyed it. So I think that means it's a success and number two We have High Rise by JG Ballard So this actually kind of builds on those ideas in Snowpiercer because here it all takes place in uh, like a dystopian 
council, well, like, uh, not even a council block, like a big, massive high-rise block. I think there were, like, 5,000 people living there. And the idea is, like, the higher you get up in the building, the higher you've risen in society, and the different floors start waging war on each other. And it was just an excellent commentary on society, even 30, 40 years ago. Probably, I think, a little longer when it was published. So, um, but still relevant today as well. And my favourite book of the quarter is Bull de Fur by Anouk Ricard and Etienne Chez. I can't really explain this one because it's mental. It's uh, another French band of destinaire, uh, a graphic novel. And it's like a weird acid trip of a story, basically, uh, involving like a bull de fur, a ball of fire. Um, yeah, Sage Patrice, he can turn into fries and he has this like refrain of Sage Patrice, c'est vous? Bien sûr, c'est moi! So yeah, I really enjoyed reading it. I read this one with my girlfriend as well, so I think that probably, you know, added to it because we were reading it together and, she, you know, she could help me to translate bits that I struggled with and whatnot. But also just the artwork in it is wonderful. Like, you could take any page out of that, just hang it on your wall, and it would look great, you know? And I think that's a good sign too. But also, like, yeah, it's like French Alice in Wonderland on acid with great illustrations. What more could you want? So there we have it, that is my list of my top 10 books of the quarter. I'll be back soon with my top 40 books of 2019, so keep your eyes peeled for that. As always, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon with another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye